Good day, everyone. Here's a video that I've been asked to make a lot, which is all about vocabulary. Riveting. So let's talk about vocabulary. Today I asked the boys, what's a word or a phrase that you can't stand when people say? When they say, not to, uh, no offense, and then they actually offend you. Anyway, children, let's start off with some vocabulary. So before we get into how we kind of like structure vocabulary lessons in our class, I think it's important to remember and to get your kids to really understand why you do vocabulary to begin with. You please act like you have more than a two word vocabulary. You could talk to kids about the fact that it's gonna be on the SAT or it's on the test or you need to know it for next year or whatever. But I think vocabulary at its essence, one of the things I talk to my students the most about is that, look, you know, as a young person, you're often not really asked what your opinion is. We need to get used to sharing who you are and what you think and what you feel. And I don't want any limitations to come when you're trying to do that. So if someone asks you how you think, how you feel, you want to make sure that you're conveying to those students that like you don't want their word choice to kind of gum up the works when they're trying to share what they are thinking. And you've got the combined vocabulary of a baked potato. And so when you go off to college, when you go off in life, when you have a, a, an argument, like a good argument with someone, you wanna make sure that you have all the words that you could possibly need to be able to do this. And so we want to really broaden our students' horizons and get them to use vocabulary. And this is only one way that we get kids to learn vocabulary. But nonetheless, I think it's important to start with why, to start with the fact that you're important, that your voice is important, and that there should be no limitations on the things that you can say and the places that you can speak from. So with that, here's how we do vocabulary in a weekly process. There are only five words per week. Now those words build over time. So if we're starting a new unit, we just finished of mice and men, and this is for ninth grade, but I think this could work for all grade levels. We start with just five words from the book. So these are not words that I just pick out of nowhere. They're not just in some like random list or something like the kids have to learn. But I look through the book to make sure that there are words that I think the students aren't really maybe gonna pick up on or they might not know. And they might gather them from context clues, but sometimes these are words that are gonna hold kids up. So you pick five words and that first week, that's all you're focusing on. It's just those five words. Next, we have students make note cards. We just use regular three by five note cards and we actually cut them in half so that you can get double the amount of them. The word goes on one side, the definition goes on the back. Now, why do this and not use some sort of like online platform? There's a hundred different ways you could do this, but it turns out that writing down what you think, the science shows that you have a 30% chance, 30% more of a chance to remember something if you just simply write it down. Not type it, but actually write it down. If you do something, which we're gonna talk about next, if you do something with that knowledge, you have an 80% chance of remembering something. So we just went from just making note cards or just doing something on some sort of online platform to like writing it down is already gonna move the needle in your direction in, in a good way. Then if you do something with it, you go to 80%. So that's what we're kind of moving into next. For every single word, I have the word, the definition, the part of speech, and there's a picture that usually goes with it. Sometimes use a GIF or a meme, but we use those later in the week for review. So it's typically a picture, but I try to have pictures that the students find relatable. I talk about this when I do live presentations all the time, how I kind of got to this place. But the short of it is, it's finding things that your kids are interested in now. Now this might require you from year to year to change your pictures. So in one year when I talk about a word like furtive, right? It means trying to be sneaky, trying to avoid attention. In the past, I've used like just regular stuff that I found online, some sort of clip art. And then I found that it was more interesting if I use something the kids liked. So in past years, uh, I've used everything from Fortnite when that was like huge and every single kid was playing it. Then we went to Among Us when every kid was playing Among Us. And now, this year when I did it, the new Obi-Wan Kenobi show is about to come out on Apple Plus, or on uh, Disney Plus. So we used an image from that trailer as well. And so what you're trying to do here is build interest just by the picture and connecting it to something that kids actually care about because they'll have a more of a likelihood to remember that word, that definition, when we use something that they are interested in. A word or a phrase that you hate when people say. Um, your opinion doesn't matter. All right, so then what do you do with these for the rest of the week? I don't just give words to kids and then test them on Friday. On Tuesdays, we'll put up uh, either a GIF 
or a meme of something that goes along with that word. Right, so we find just stuff on the internet and you put it very simply, you make it in Google Slides and then in Google Slides you can just input any kind of GIF or meme, that's the first slide and then all the kids have to just take out their card, they hold it up, right? They're not allowed to say what the word is. So now you have to have your note cards um, to have kids not lose note cards, side note. I have them put them in the weirdest place they can think of, in their book bag or in their jacket. So our students have to wear uniforms, so sometimes they put it in the inside pocket, but every backpack has some weird little spot that you know that I don't know what it normally gets used for. So we say, hey, you don't put anything else in there, put your note cards in there so you remember them every day. The kids then hold up the note card as we're going around and we just give points for participation. And this is a really great way to build engagement, to have something that's funny, to have something that's competitive, and it's not so dry. It's like matching the meme or the GIF with the note card that you have. So then the note card, you're just showing that word and just giving kids credit if they get it. Really, it's just for trying. I just tell them they get points if they get it right because everybody loves to hear the word points. Points, points, points. A word or a phrase that you hate when people say, make sure you say it loud enough, hit the mic. Uh, like a word or a phrase? And like when I'm talking to somebody and they just be like, we do not care. I'd be like, why, why would you ask me? On Wednesday, something that we just started doing, this was my co-teacher, this wasn't even my idea. My co-teacher, Kayla, came up with this idea of using songs as a review. So we find songs that, so you have five, six, seven songs. Some, some words we do more than once. We'll do more than one GIF, we'll do one, more than one meme, we'll do more than one song. So you find a song and that has been everything from the Beatles to J. Cole to Iron Maiden to the Eagles. I mean, it's all over the place, but you're putting up a song that has either like the vibe of the song, the theme of the song, or the lyrics of the song go along with one of the words. And this has been really fun because you cannot believe sometimes the stuff that your students know. Like the fact that two of my students last week knew an Iron Maiden song just kind of blew my mind. Iron Maiden is indestructible. But this is a really fun way to kind of do this. The kids look forward to it. So every Wednesday is Music Wednesday. You take out your cards, you hold up the card that goes along with the song. And again, you're touching those words and those definitions again, but you're doing it with something that is interesting to the students. A word or a phrase you hate when people say? When people mispronounce the word library and they say library. Then on Thursdays, we do same kind of game, uh, but this time there are different scent. The lights just went off. Let's see. The motion lights, they go off. So on Thursdays, we use sentences and the sentences are sometimes the same sentences we're gonna use on the assessment. So they are typically sentences that have to do with something that's happening either in the book that we're reading or in school or in pop culture, right? So it's something the kids would know. So sometimes there are certain kids that I write sentences about every week. There are certain teachers that I kind of poke fun of uh, or at and make sentences about every week. One of the words last week was, Mr. Reynolds doesn't eat fast food because it is blank with chemicals and the word was laden. And so that was something I talk to the kids about all the time and they ask me if I eat fast food and I tell them no because it is, it's filled with chemicals and stuff that I don't wanna put into my body. Uh, no judgment there too, folks. If you, uh, if you wanna just go grab a Popeye's chicken sandwich, you do you. But I'm just saying, Reynolds thinks that's laden with chemicals even though the companies are furtive about it. That was two vocab words. So when the kids are answering those questions, they're simply holding up the card again, responding in the same way. A word or a phrase that you hate when people say? That I don't know what I'm be talking about sometimes. Oh, Just because of how short I am or how young I am. I hate that. All right. Especially when it comes from adults. No shade. Reminds is when you ask someone for help and they say do it yourself, no matter you know where they at. Because. You wouldn't ask for help. Yeah, it's like, like, I wouldn't ask for help if I knew I could do it myself. All right. Here's two other things we do before we get to the assessment. One, I constantly use the words during the week. I constantly try and string all the vocab words together, whether I'm telling a story about my life, whether it has something to do with the story, whether it has something to do with like, I heard something went down on lunch today. And can you believe that the lunchroom uh, floor was laden with food from a food fight or something like that, although we've never had a food fight. And the kids that instigated it were trying to be furtive down there. And so you are constantly using the words in this kind of playful way that I think, again, builds interest and is just kind of funny, but you're, the kids are using those words again. 
Now, if we are reading the book that week, one, kids get credit if they notice the word. Like, so if they see a word, they'll just yell vocab word, and then you get credit for that. And if you use the vocab word in any of your assignments that week. So if we're doing a study guide, if you're doing a journal entry and you use the words, you get credit for that as well. And you just like tack a point on or something like that. There's an assignment, it's not a big deal. But again, what you're trying to do is like get kids to proactively sort of use some of the stuff that you're using in class. Then on Fridays, that's every day that we have an assessment. I stand outside of my door with a giant sign that says that you have a test today and it says how many words are on the vocab quiz. If they have a book quiz also, there's a sign for that as well. And then we have a word wall in class, which is something that my co-teacher does. She has these great sort of laminated pieces that we can just erase. And then every week she writes the new words on there so that it's this week's words are here. And then last week's words are here. And I'll get to why we do that in a second, but it just makes it easier to kind of reuse them. And uh, she always does it so that we want what we want is utter consistency. So the way the slides are set up, the way that we do the reviews, the way that the words are on the wall, it is utterly consistent so that there's not like a whole lot of changing from week to week unless we're just optimizing what we do. Sometimes that will change things, but then that becomes the new normal. A word or a phrase you hate when people say? Apples the oranges. Like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, apple is an apple and orange is orange. For the test, look, there's a thousand ways to test kids on vocabulary. And so one of the very simple ways that we do it is just by having the words on one side of the paper, the definition on the other, and the kids just have to write the letter that connects them. For some of my other classes, I chunk those so that it's easier for students that have some processing delays and things of that nature. And then on the back, it is using them in a sentence. I teach mostly co-taught classes with students who ha are on a very low reading level. Because of that, we don't make the tests really, really difficult. What we wanna do is make sure kids can understand it. We make sure that it is something we sort of rig the game so that you can win, so we're not giving a ton of words each week. And then we are having you either write sentences in some of my classes or just input the word into a blank in the sentence. So it's not meant to be overly difficult, but look, I think for a lot of our students, they've been failed by the education system for the first 14 years of their life. So we're trying to really create something that fits them and we've had a lot of success with this. Now the following week, you have those words again and five new words. For co-taught classes, we only go up to 10 words at a time. For classes that are not co-taught, we go up to about 20 words at a given time. And those tests get more and more difficult as time goes on. But the co-taught classes, they do not get more difficult. It's just the following week, it's those five words and the next five words. And one thing to just kind of be careful about is making sure that when you are matching things, you wanna make sure that you don't have like two words that can fit in one sentence. You would just wanna be careful of that kind of thing. And the last thing, look, I, I believe that like, there's a lot of stress in the world. I think that, you know, right now, he's still dealing with COVID. I won't even say post COVID. Oh no, you're not ending this pandemic. There is a lot of trauma that kids are dealing with and a lot of trauma that kids deal with on, on any given day. And there's a lot of test anxiety. If you don't do well on a test on Friday, as long as you take it and you try, I allow students to retake it Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of the following week. That following Wednesday, I give the old test back kids already know what they had in the grade once those tests are given back no one's allowed to take an assessment that's already been handed back because the answers are basically out there but you build in that time monday tuesday wednesday before school during lunch or after school you can just come in retake the assessment and i just give you whatever's on that second test and the lights went out again <laughs> this is my life and so what that stops is it stops cheating to a very large degree because if you cheat on an assessment and I catch you, you are not allowed to retake it. And it allows test anxiety to really kind of like chill because you're telling a kid, hey, look, I know that you, like, you didn't study, you weren't here, you missed a day, you forgot about it. It's cool. Just come in next week and retake it. But for right now, think of it like this. I'm allowing you to just see the test before you even have to take it next week. So then it becomes not such a big deal. Just take a look at it, try your best, and then come in next week and retake it. So in a nutshell, that's how we do vocabulary. I hope this helps you out. Look, gang, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can hit me up right at realrapwithreynolds.com. You can also go to our Facebook group, Real Rap with Reynolds Teacher Talk. That's a great place to kind of get other ideas and to connect with teachers that are really doing amazing stuff. And look, if you could please like this, 
and subscribe when you like things it really just puts us in the algorithm so that more teachers that are trying to do good work like you are are just going to find more content like this so please do so that's it gang see you next time peace